I have to give honor to God who is the head of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Without him, I couldn't be standing on here today. Honor to my family. I just have the most loving, awesome family. And to our bishop, Bishop Kiefer Bradshaw, and to Pastor Nicole Bradshaw, our associate pastor. She's absent today. Uh, to everybody who serves, I mean, just, just awesome, awesome, awesome. And um, uh, uh, for, for a prayer warrior this morning, beautiful word, truly a blessing. And I think it's young Elisha. He's like, Elisha, awesome job. And, and God makes no mistakes because just as simple as his name was an encouragement to me this morning. Because when I get into the word, if you have your Bibles, we're going on over to Second Kings. So, young man, your name is awesome. A special, special name on this morning. And uh, just confirmation from God that... Um, you know, that's where he wants me to be. Uh, I have my Bible, but I think I want it to come from the NIV, and this is the new King James, so I have to stick with modern technology, y'all. So y'all could look for 2 Kings uh, uh, chapter 4. 2 Kings uh, chapter 4. When you have it, say amen. 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 Okay. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, as I come before your holy presence, God, as humbly as I know how, God. Lord, I just lift your name on high this morning, God. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for who you are, Father God, and I thank you for who I am in you, Father God. Lord, I just pray, Father God, that you will bless this word that is about to go forth to your people, God, that it be a blessing to them, Father God. Open up their ears, Lord, and then just, just give them a heart, Father God, to receive your word, Father God, because all that we do, Father God, we need to do it for you, God, to your glory, Father. God, we love you, God. We thank you. We praise you, and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I'm coming from 2 Kings chapter 4, and I'm going to read verse 1 to 7, and it reads, the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elijah replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Somebody say, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. Somebody said, then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Talk about an abundant blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you today from the sermon title, No More Emptiness. It's time to be filled. No more emptiness. It's time to be filled. Have you ever spent time chasing after something but come up empty? You, you, you invest time energy, money, and a variety of resources, but to no avail. Have you ever felt empty on the inside? You could be in a room full of people, but you feel lonely. I want to talk to you today about no more emptiness, whether it's in the form of something you're pursuing or a feeling of emptiness that you might be feeling or experiencing on the inside. In the scripture that we read, we see a mother, a widow, who is left in debt with no way of paying her husband's creditor. She is in a place of emptiness. Oh, yes. Not only did she lose her husband to death, but now she's threatened to lose her two sons 
as slaves. My God. She finds herself empty and desperate. But thank God she had enough faith to turn to the man of God, Elisha. She could have sought after other ungodly methods to repay her debt, but she turned instead to the man of God. Amen. Now, how many people do you know have found themselves in a place of emptiness and turned to empty things to try and fill that void? Instead of turning to God, they turn to drugs, alcohol, immorality, and all kinds of ungodly resources. Instead of trying to earn an honest living, they turn to stealing and dishonest schemes. But do you know that instead of being filled, they came up even emptier? My God. Some of them end up behind bars, some end up depressed, and even suicidal. So I want to encourage you on today that if you find yourself in a place of emptiness, I encourage you to seek the Lord to be filled. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes. Now in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1, I want to do a little parallel. I want to parallel uh, the latest situation, parallel back to us on today. It says the wife of a man from the company of the prophets. Yes. Now when I read that, I see establishing connection. What am I talking about? The lady is saying that her husband, it said that the lady husband is from the company of the prophets. Yes. So she is connected. He's connected. I take that that he's a man of God. Now we are connected to God through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now when she cried out to Elisha, we can cry out to Jesus. God. Hallelujah. Now, remember, the lady didn't come in her name. She said she came in her husband's name because she said, my husband, she said, your servant, my husband. So when she went to Elijah, she wasn't coming in her name. She was coming in her husband's name. Amen? Amen. Now, we don't come to God in our name, hallelujah, but we come to God in the name of Jesus. So just as she said, your servant, my husband, we go to God and we say, your son, your only begotten son, my savior. Come on, somebody. And we know that when we go in Jesus' name, whatever we ask in his name, that is in accordance to his will, we know that it shall be done for us. Amen? Amen. Now she reminded Elijah of her husband's character, his nature. She said that her husband revered the Lord. Now, now that she reminded her husband of that, not that God needs reminded, but I believe that if we go to God and we remind him of his son Jesus and all that, that his son is, I believe that if we just begin to, to, to speak and speak out the character of God. See, God doesn't need to be reminded because we know that he is omniscient. He's all-knowing and he never forgets. But if we begin to talk to him about the goodness of Jesus, I think it will remind us of his great sacrifice of redeeming love. So we go to him and we say, Lord, your son Jesus, who laid down his life on Calvary's cross, the one that they hung high and the one that they, the one that they hung, stretched wide, hung high and stretched wide. Yes, yes, yes. The one that knew no sin, but became sin for us. See, if we begin to talk about the goodness of Jesus, I believe that a mind shift will begin to take place. So it's not that God needed to be reminded as this lady was reminding Elisha that her husband revered the Lord. God doesn't really need to be reminded about his son Jesus, but I think that it reminds us and it shifts our mindset when we begin to speak and begin to profess out of our mouth the goodness of Jesus. It blesses us and it shifts our mindset. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 
Now she said, but now his creditor is coming to take her two sons as slaves. And when I read that, I was reminded that now the adversary, the devil, yes. is roaring around yes. like a is, is prowling around like a roaring lion, yes. seeking whom he may devour. Yes. He wants to trap us and enslave us to sin. He wants to keep us in bondage and captivity. But we know that who the Son sets free is free indeed. Oh. Hallelujah. Christ came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. No more emptiness. Oh, yeah. It's time to be filled. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No more emptiness. Glory to God. So it says, her husband was from the company of the prophets. He revered the Lord. He was connected, so she felt like she can turn to the man of God for help. And you are a child of God. Your branch is connected to the true vine, who is Jesus. Therefore, you can ask anything in his name according to John 14, 14. He will do it. And Matthew 7, 7 reminds us that ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. So we see that we have not because we ask not. Amen. Now let's go on down into verse 2. Verse 2, it says, Elisha replied. Elisha replied. Don't you know that Jesus will answer you? Yes, he will. Jonah said, I cried out to the Lord and he answered me. Hallelujah. So Elisha replied, how can I help you? How can I help you? And I feel like I, 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 I just want to jump to the story of Jesus and the blind man uh, in, 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 in Mark 10, 51, when Jesus asked the blind man, what do you want me to do for you? Now, of course, we know that Jesus already knew that the man was blind and that he wanted to see. But I believe that he wanted the man to reveal what was in his heart. So Elijah says, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? I feel like Jesus is saying, what do you have in your heart? He wants to know what you, what you have in your heart. Now, if I'm going to use what you have, then I need you to believe, to reveal what it is that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus already knows what he's working with. But when you say that thing out of your mouth, that's you exposing what is on the inside of you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Is your heart full of pride, hate, lust, greed? Wow. When you begin to profess what is in your heart. Oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said, the woman replied, she said, your servant has nothing there at all. My God. And as I read that, I believe that that's where the Lord wants you and I to be. He wants us to be empty of us so that we can be filled with more of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Empty of ourselves so that we could be filled with more of him. Now the woman says, she said, she has nothing there at all except, except a small jar of olive oil. My God. Except a small jar of olive oil. Now we know in scripture that olive oil sometimes is used to represent the Holy Spirit. All right, I'm going to get to that, but I just want to throw that little nugget out there. So she said she has nothing at all except a small jar of olive oil. Now I believe that we need to say to the Lord, Lord, I have nothing except a surrendered heart to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now the woman said she had nothing there at all. Her house was empty. But then she said except a small jar of olive oil. See, what you consider nothing or not important God can turn that into something of great importance. Yes. What we believe is nothing, God can turn it into something as something of great importance. But you must be willing to give it to him. Amen. God to give it to him. So when you take your nothing or your small and give it to him, he will give it back to you as something great. As the scripture says, give and it shall be given back to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running 
over. We know that God is a miracle worker. He can make a way out of nowhere. All this lady had was a small jar of olive oil. See, God doesn't need plenty to work with. If you give him your little, he can make it into more than enough. He will make it abundant. Hallelujah. We know that he took two fishes and five loaves and he fed multitudes. You just have to be obedient and trust him with what you have. He is a God of multiplication. Give him what you have in faith and watch him turn it into excess. Y'all act like y'all don't believe me on this morning. Hallelujah. Give him what you have in faith and watch him turn it into ex excess. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No more emptiness. Now in verse 3, Elijah said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Now remember Bishop spoke and get up, go out and gather. That was quite a few Sundays back. Get up, go out and gather. Now the lady had to do just that. She had to get up, go out and gather the jars. Hallelujah. It's an amazing how God Glory to God. So he said, go ask all your neighbors for empty jars and, and don't ask for just a few. Glory to God. Y'all want to be filled on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't ask for just a few. Don't you know that we serve a big God who will open up the windows of heaven and pour you on a blessing so great that you won't have room enough to receive y'all. She had to go get containers from her neighbors. Hallelujah. What a mighty big God. We serve a God of abundance, of extent. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't care how empty you are. Hallelujah. When God get ready to bless you, he will bless you in such a big way that your vessel is not even enough to contain the blessing that he's about to get to you. Hallelujah. You have to go out and seek containers from others. Verse 4. 
It says, she was told to go inside and shut the door behind her and her sons. Yes, yes, yes. Now, can you imagine her going door to door asking for jars from her neighbors? I would think that they would be wondering, what was she going to do with the jars? I don't know. I would be wondering. I think in today's society, somebody come around walking door to door in the neighborhood asking people for jars. As nosy as we are, we want to know what in the world are you going to do with all that jars? <laughs> My God. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So I would think that they would be wondering what she's going to do with all the jars. And imagine how they must have felt when their curiosity was shut out. It was shut out. Because once she got the jars, she went inside and she shut the door. See, sometimes God will bless you behind closed doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes God will bless you behind closed doors. And it is for your own good. Glory to God. Glory to God. Because can you imagine if the neighbors got a hold of why she wanted the jars? Now maybe there would be if, if she if, they, if, they, if she got if, they, if the neighbors got a hold of what, why she wanted the jars maybe they would have been selfish and they would have wanted the jars filled for themselves. Some of them might have even refused to lend their containers. You know how we be, well, but God's going around and He's in the blessing business and 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 and. and
door behind her and her sons. Yes. Like I said, some of you need to shut the door behind you. Leave all the drama and mess behind. Hallelujah. All the distractions and the deceptions. Glory to God. All the haters and the naysayers. All the jealousy and the negativity. Glory to God. You need to shut all was 
full. Hallelujah. When you go in and you shut the door behind the enemy and all the foolishness and you lay in the presence of God and let his word be and just heal. When you come out, you're going to come out full. She went in empty, but she came out full. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. She went in empty, but she came out Thank you, Jesus. My God. My God. She wasn't empty, but she came out full. No more emptiness. It's time to be filled. Whew, I'm on my last verse. Verse 7. Verse 7 says, Go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what's left. Glory to God. She had more than enough. I don't think y'all saw that. She had more than enough to pay the creditors. She even had some left over so that her and her sons were able to live on it. So not just her needs met, but her sons also. See, God will fill you in such a way that even those who are connected to you are blessed. represents the people 
who we are going to go out to seek to make disciples from. Because you know we're in the discipleship mandate, aren't we not? Yeah. Hallelujah. Because see, when we feel, like I said before, when God fills us, it's going to bless us and every area that we need to be blessed. But then we have to be prepared to share that blessing. Yeah. Just like the lady had enough enough uh, uh, oil to sell to pay the creditors, and she still had enough left for her and for her son. So it's a connection blessing. So we got to prepare, not just for us being feeling here and keeping it all to ourselves, but being ready and willing to share it with others. Yes. So this side over here, like I said, uh, are, are, are we going to think of that as, as the neighbors, you know, the neighborhood where she had to go to borrow the oil. And, and, and we're just going to say that's going to represent the people who we're going to go out to seek to make disciples. Amen? Amen? This side is her house. Remember, when she went out to the neighbor and borrowed the joy, she came into her house in the room where she filled the oils. So we're going to say, so, so this is the room where the jars are filled. And, and for this message, I'm going to say this represents the her house of God, the church. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, section three, this side over here, this is where the jars that were filled with the oil were set aside. Now, we're going to say this is going to represent the workers, the leaders. Okay? Why? Because remember now that once the how do I come up with that? Once the jars were filled with oil, they were set aside to be used for purpose. Okay? So that's workers, leaders. Okay. She was to sell the oil and pay the creditors, and her and her sons were to live off the rest. So we know that those jars serve a purpose. The jars didn't just 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 get set aside to look cute or to gather dust. Uh, they were set aside to serve. All right. They had purpose. Come on. Somebody said they had purpose. Okay. So likewise, those of us who are chosen and filled are set apart to serve. Are you with me? All right. So if you're on the filled side of the room, make sure that you are filled and ready to serve. But whose purpose? Not your purpose. God's purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. You with me so far? All right. So if God didn't fill you for the purpose you're trying to serve, it will not be productive. Amen? Somebody say, it will not be productive. So if God didn't fill you for the finances, then don't mess with it. If God didn't fill you to preach or the pastor or to sing or whatever purpose it is that you're trying to serve, if God didn't fill you to do it, you need to step away from it. Get back to the filling station, pour yourself out of God, and ask to fill you for his purpose. Yes. Amen? Amen? Remember the jars didn't get moved to the other side until they were filled with oil. Yes. So even though the empty jars had a purpose and their purpose was to contain the oil, the jars didn't become valuable until they were filled with the oil. Right. Are you with me? Yes. They had a purpose, but until they were filled with the oil, they didn't have any value. They were just empty. So the value was not in the jars, but it was what was placed in the jars. And we know that that was the olive oil. And like I said earlier, in scripture, we know that olive oil has been used to represent what? The Holy Spirit. So now she could have said all she had was a bottle of wine or some of the spirits. But hallelujah, she said she had some olive oil, which represents what? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So make sure you be filled with the right spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, God has a mighty sweet way, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. She didn't say I have a small jar of wine or some other spirits. It was the olive oil. The Holy Spirit. So you can't serve God's purpose without being filled with God's Spirit. Moral of the story. Can't serve God's purpose without being filled with God's Spirit. See, without His Spirit, you're just empty vessels of no value. But once He fills you with His Spirit, you become valuable and ready to serve His purpose. Amen? Amen. But I got to warn you now. You've got to be careful not to let your value cause you 
to become proud. You must remain humble. Glory to God. Why? Because this thing is bigger than us. See, we're reminded in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7, it says that we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is of God and not from us. It's not about us, y'all. It's about God. It's about God. Hallelujah. So just like the jars didn't belong to the lady, but they were loaned to her by her neighbors to serve a purpose, it's the same way this vessel, this body, doesn't belong to us, but it was loaned to us by God to serve his purpose. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. It was loaned to us to serve his purpose. So we gotta be humble. We gotta be humble. Hallelujah. See, we have too many people are sitting in position with wrong motives and personal agendas. But this is not about personal agenda feeling. This is about kingdom building. that you're emptied of yourself and filled with God's spirit. Then you'll be able to pour into others. Because how can we pour into others if we don't love them? We're not going to be able to do that. We've got to be able to love each other. Ephesians 3, 17 to 19 says, And that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you will be rooted and grounded in love. In what? Love. In love. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and height and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So if you want to be filled with the fullness of God, it starts with love. Yes. And see, we're commanded to love. First, we gotta love God. The scripture tells us we have to love the Lord with all of our hearts and all of our hearts. We gotta love God. Yes, yes. And then we have to love others. Amen? Yes. It's all about love. Yes. Now, you ain't gotta be able to pour into somebody if you're filled and now you're feeling all valuable and all y'all puffed up and proud oh, and think that, oh, oh, I've been filled and I've achieved and I've then you can't build kingdom. You can't build kingdom that way. You got to love people. You got to greet people in love. You got to hug people. You got to let them know I love you. Not just in words, but in action. Because how can we say that we love God who we don't see when we can't love each other that we're seeing? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Now remember that all the joys that the lady borrowed were filled from the jar of oil she already had in her house. Remember that? She went out to borrow the empty jars, but all those jars were filled by that small jar of oil that she already had in her house. Likewise, we who are already filled in the church, we who are in the church, we will be used to fill those who are coming in. Amen? Hallelujah. Therefore, I believe we need to be filled first. Because how are we going to fill somebody or pour into somebody if we're empty? We have to be filled first. Now, don't expect God to bring more people in the church before we fill those who are already here. Because if you empty, what do you have to pour? You can't pour nothing into anybody. So if we're sitting up in here, a room full of empty people, and we're waiting for God to bring more people in, on top of that emptiness, what you going to do with them when they get here? So we got to be filled. We have to be filled. Those of us who are here have to be filled. Now, I don't think that all the jars that this lady borrowed were the same sizes. I don't think that the neighbors, all the neighbors had the same size jars. I don't think so. Therefore, some must have taken longer to fill than others. Are you with me? Hallelujah. But the scripture said, but she kept pouring into each until it was filled. See, we can't give up on the people.
and so some are smaller than yes. some. So we all need different measures yes. of oil yes. to fill us. Yes. But the important thing is keep pouring. Yes. Keep pouring. and went in, shut the door behind her and her sons, she never came out until all the jars were filled. Then in verse seven says, then she went out and told Elisha. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? Sometimes we get so carried away chasing after what is on the outside. Come on, somebody. We get so carried away chasing after what is on the outside when we really need to shut the door behind us for a little while and work faithfully with what's on the inside because the scripture says if you are faithful over a few, I will make you ruler over many. from the small jar of oil she already had. And look how awesome God is. Even though the blessing was abundant, the benefits overflowed. I don't think y'all see that. What am I talking about? It says the oil stopped when the jars were filled. So the blessing was abundant. But the benefits from selling the oil overflowed from her being able to pay the debts, the creditors, to have enough for her and her sons to live on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God will give you an abundant blessing that overflows with benefits. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. She was filled abundantly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See, I wish I could sing. Uh, I think it was Tasha Cobbs had this song about fill me up, fill me up, Lord, until I overflow. Now, the overflow is not wasted, you know. You're filled up, but then the overflow, the blessing is going to flow over from me to you, from you. over your life in the name of Jesus. Every debt paid, every curse broken, every broken heart bent, every good relationship that was broken, restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No more empty nets. Hallelujah. Be filled in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.